Hey there! Today, we're diving into a topic that's been buzzing around the world faster than a caffeinated bee, population collapse. Buckle up, because we're about to take a roller coaster ride through the theories behind this demographic phenomenon. Picture this. You're at a party, and suddenly everyone starts leaving. No more pizza, no more dancing, just tumbleweed rolling across the dance floor. That's kind of what's happening to our global population party, and we're here to figure out why. Let's kick things off with a mind bender. For centuries, we've been worried about overpopulation. But plot twist! Now we're facing the opposite problem. It's like preparing for a flood and ending up in a desert. How did we get here? Well, grab your detective hat, because we're about to unravel this mystery. First stop on our population collapse tour, the fertility rate. No, we're not talking about your ability to grow prize-winning tomatoes. We're talking about the average number of children born to a woman over her lifetime. The magic number for population replacement is 2.1. Why the extra 0.1, you ask? Well, let's just say life can be a bit unpredictable. Now, here's where things get interesting. In many countries, especially developed ones, the fertility rate has dropped faster than a skydiver without a parachute. We're talking rates as low as 1.2 or 1.3 in some places. That's like trying to fill a swimming pool with a leaky bucket. It's just not going to work out in the long run. But why is this happening? Well, it's not just one thing. It's like a perfect storm of factors coming together to create this population predicament. Let's break it down. As more people, especially women, pursue higher education and focus on their careers, they're often delaying or choosing not to have children. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Something's got to give. Raising kids is expensive. With rising costs of living and economic uncertainties, many people are thinking twice before expanding their families. It's like being asked to buy a mansion when you can barely afford a studio flat. The pressure to have kids isn't what it used to be. More people are embracing child-free lifestyles, and that's totally cool. It's like suddenly realizing you don't have to eat Brussels sprouts just because your grandma says so. This one's a bit counterintuitive. As people live longer and healthier lives, they're having fewer kids. It's like having a bigger pizza, but cutting it into smaller slices. As more people move to cities, they tend to have fewer children. It's harder to raise a big family in a small flat than on a farm. Plus, have you ever tried to fit a stroller on a crowded subway? Not fun. Now, you might be thinking, so what? Fewer people, more resources for everyone, right? Well, not so fast. Population collapse isn't just about having fewer people around to high-five. It's got some serious implications. Imagine an economy where there are more retirees than workers. Who's going to keep things running? It's like trying to run a marathon with a team of power walkers. With fewer young people to support an aging population, our social systems could be in for a rough ride. It's like trying to balance an elephant on a seesaw with a chihuahua. Fewer people could mean fewer ideas and less innovation. It's like trying to brainstorm with only one brain cell. Countries with declining populations might lose economic and political influence on the global stage. It's like showing up to a potluck with a single grape and expecting to be the life of the party. But before you start planning your doomsday bunker, let's talk about some potential solutions that theorists and policymakers are considering. Some countries are trying to encourage baby-making with financial incentives, better childcare support, and family-friendly work policies. It's like offering a bounty for baby production, minus the creepy dystopian vibes. Welcoming immigrants can help offset population decline. It's like inviting new players to join your team when half your roster decides to retire. As the workforce shrinks, robots and AI might pick up the slack. Just don't expect them to laugh at your jokes at the office Christmas party. Maybe we need to rethink how we measure success in a world with fewer people. Quality over quantity, anyone? By improving these areas, we might be able to boost productivity even with a smaller population. 
It's like turning your remaining players into superstar athletes. Now, here's where it gets really wild. Some theorists argue that population collapse might not be all doom and gloom. They suggest it could lead to a more sustainable world with less strain on resources and the environment. It's like going from a chaotic house party to a chill gathering with your closest friends. But hold on to your hats, because there's another twist in this population tale. Some experts believe that as societies adapt to lower fertility rates, they might naturally bounce back to a sustainable level. It's like a demographic self-correcting mechanism. Nature, you sneaky devil. So there you have it, the theory of population collapse in all its complex, mind-bending glory. It's an issue that's part demographics, part economics, part sociology, and a whole lot of holy cow, what's going to happen next? As we wrap up this whirlwind tour of population collapse theory, remember that the future isn't set in stone. We're not just passive observers in this demographic drama. We're the actors, the directors, and sometimes the comic relief. Whether we end up in a world with fewer people or find a way to balance things out, one thing's for sure. It's going to be one heck of a ride. So keep your eyes open, your mind curious, and maybe, just maybe, consider whether you want to add a few more players to your team in this game of life. Until next time, keep pondering, keep questioning, and remember, in the grand scheme of things, we're all just trying to figure out this crazy population puzzle together. Stay curious, my friends.